You don't have to edit. Okay, and we are live. Woohoo! Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here today. We usually do Facebook Live, but today we had a lot of technical difficulties. So we are recording this session. Uh, but please feel free to send your questions or comments uh, on the box below. And then I'm going to ask Jack if she'll be available to answer some of those questions uh, later on today. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Fabiana Bacchini. I'm the executive director of the Canadian Premature Babies Foundation. And we've been very committed to our families to continue to support and educate uh, NICU families throughout these very challenging times we are all living at this moment. And every, as you know, Monday and Wednesdays, uh, and Friday, no, Mondays and Fridays, we are hosting Facebook Lives with experts. And Wednesdays, uh, Kate Robson is hosting a real time uh, parent group uh, for families who are currently in the ICU or discharged home. And to join Kate Robson's group, you can uh, join our Facebook group, which is Canadian. Premi Parent Network. The links will always be on our page so you can easily join the group so you have access to that private uh, conversation on Wednesdays. But Mondays and Fridays, I always bring an expert uh, to chat with us and answer all your questions and concerns uh, so you get through this time together. And today joining me here is Jack Horrigan who is a dear friend of mine, who was my incredible support during my NICU stay with my son in Mount Sinai Hospital seven years ago. So just to give a little bit of a background on Jack, she is specializes in building connection. As a professionally trained improviser, she's a Second City alumni, writer, and former television host. She combines her lived experience as a premier parent with her communications expertise to integrate teams, bring awareness and enhance healthcare delivery. She volunteers uh, right here with us at the Canadian Premature Babies Foundation. She works with It Doesn't Have to Hurt uh, Pain Management Education and other initiatives which enhance the lives of patients, families and healthcare pro uh, professionals. You can learn more about her work on her website, swaypartners.com. We're gonna make the link available to you. But we are talking here today with Jack, not only as a, a preemie mother of a beautiful girl, Tess, who is uh, nine years old now, but also she just created this beautiful portal uh, called Fun Academy, bringing a lot of resource to us families, trying to manage this crisis and work from home with children. And uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. So Jack, welcome. Thank you. And I'm thank so you happy for, to be here. Thank you for joining us here today uh, on this beautiful Good Friday. The sun is out here in Toronto. It's a beautiful day, even though you're enjoying from inside our homes. But my quest, first question to you is what drove you to create this portal? Wow. So um, like everyone, you sort of got hit with the everything was canceled. My daughter was already on March break. She had it for two weeks. The second week was canceled, her camp. And I thought, oh, heavens to Betsy's, what am I gonna do now? Um, because my daughter, uh, she was a 27 weeker and she has um, some residual things that she deals with, a lot of change and transitions and things like that are difficult for her. So uh, the first thing I thought was, oh, I better find some sort of schedule and get her on track to give her a, a week of something because I don't know what we're gonna do um, inside. Uh, so I just started putting things on my website. I, I made a page, it was sort of grassroots, um, making schedules for her and, and finding theme days, if you will, to try and find activities to keep her busy throughout that first week of March break. Uh, and then I started talking to other parents and realizing, hmm, maybe I could share this with them because people were struggling at the beginning. Um, and so I just started putting links out there, some of my schedules that I had done with tests and some projects and some exercises that I was doing with her at home. And I thought other people could, you know, benefit from it. So it was really nothing. And so don't look too closely at how the lines are and the things are posted because I am not a graphic designer, but that's how it started anyway. But it looks great, uh, Jack. And now obviously this has progressed as the pandemic unfolds and we know this is not going to be two, three weeks ahead of us. It might be many months or even until September uh, if the schools uh, cancel classes 
<laughs> Don't say that. In re- wow, well, it's, it's a reality. possibility. It's a reality. It's reality. But what do we have available now on that portal? So as time went on and I realized, wow, this is not just going to be, this is a marathon, not a sprint, like in the NICU. Uh, I realized that there was a need for other things, mindfulness, um, links and resources for other things for parents, um, resources for online schooling things. Um, the TD, I'm in the Toronto area, but the TDSB hadn't put out the online learning yet. Um, my daughter goes to a different school where she has a portal of her own now, which is fantastic. But um, as I started to talk to teachers and friends and parents, I realized, wow, there's a lot of people who don't have any of this. So I just kept putting links, um, educational links, uh, references from um, other teachers recommended by them, learning sites for all different ages. And it just kept progressing in different areas. And um, for me, the biggest piece for my daughter was um, trying to explain what was going on in the world and why she's home and why her um, schedule changed. So getting that information and getting the dialogue going for that was great with some of these videos that we put on the site. So there's explaining COVID by a doctor in New Zealand. There's um, some uh, age appropriate books that are picture books that you can click on and download and read with your child. there's informational links for parents. Uh, so it sort of started as a fun little, you know, schedules and activities. And then I thought as it went on, the more resources, the better. A place where you can just go and try and click to whatever you need. So this certainly has been supporting uh, your daughter, Tess. And have you had any feedback from other parents how this website have been helping their children? children to cope with this isolation and do homeschool that is all new to many of us. It sure is. You know, it's like I said before, it's a marathon, not a sprint, right? So at the beginning of this, I was like, oh, we're regimented, we're scheduled, we're going to do this, this, and this. And as time went on, I talked to other parents and we're all like, wait a minute, this, this is a lot. So whether we do it in the morning or spread it out over the day or talk to each other, um, about morphing schedules and what works for each individual family, right? So yeah, I got a lot of feedback from parents, especially parents who have kids at home that may have challenges or learning issues uh, saying, you know, this is too much or uh, my daughter has difficulty with the live chats because there's too many kids on at once and then there's too much stimulation for her. So um, I talked to her teachers at school to try and do one-on-ones or um, they have taped now so she can watch it at her own time and stop and go. So it was dialogue like that, talking to other parents about, well, what do you do for this? And what do you do for that? And does this work for you? And the more I talked to people, the more I realized, you know, with all the different learning styles and all the issues that kids have on their own, let alone what's going on in the world right now, um, giving options was really a huge piece uh, that I learned uh, that parents really need. Options, options, options. (laughs) Absolutely, because it is very overwhelming. And uh, sometimes you see uh, families posting, oh, because you're picking up a new hobby or you're doing this, you're doing that class. And then you have all these emails coming from schools with different uh, possibilities and it becomes so overwhelming. Sometimes it's like you have too many options of where to go, but it's what really caters to your family, to your child that is so very important. Right? So my son also needs uh, uh, some structure and knowing that there is uh, uh, the time that he has to attend school online and that we're going to do this. So he needs that schedule to, to function better on an everyday basis. So I think what you said is so very important to what are the options for each child to work with a teacher uh, specifically so you don't get so overwhelmed with all this that is going on. Yeah, and the bottom line is, it's like when you were in the NICU or when you brought your child home for the first time, you know your kid best, right? You're the one who sees them every day. You're the one who interacts and understands them. So what may work for some child in their class may not work for your child at home, especially with transitions and dealing with change and dealing with, there's been a lot of things for us to adapt to. And then the more I sort of step back and realize, you know, Um, We can't do it all, number one, and cut yourself some slack as parents. Uh, Number two, do what's best for your family and and trust your gut. Like trust your gut that you know your child. You know at a certain time they're done for the day 
or maybe revisit later on at night when they're calmer, or maybe it's time for them to go outside and get some fresh air, or with my daughter taking a bath or anything water related really helps her calm down and, you know, re sort of uh, recalibrates her, if you will. So just giving options and different things that they can watch later, or, you know, whether it's a French lesson or it's a video or just music to listen to, to have in the background to calm them down. So there's a, a bunch of options on the site as just a portal. It is wonderful. And also, I, I want to talk to you a little bit later on on how it, there's also a resource that parents can use themselves because we also in, are in this together, right? It's not only the children that facing this challenge, but also as, as parents and how we parent and how we juggle work with kids at home and try to find that. <laughs> I don't like the don't word. Say the word. Don't not say the word. Don't say word. Because that word is... <laughs> It doesn't exist in Bad my thing. life, and I'm sure it doesn't exist in a lot of different lives. No, <laughs> yeah, this is, it's not even a word. It shouldn't even be in the dictionary. <laughs> There's no such thing as balance. It's silly, but I know what you're saying. It's, it's where do you find, where do you calibrate? Where, where does it work for you? Where's your baseline and how, how much can you, can you manage, I guess, yeah. right? Um, and for what you were saying at the beginning of this talk was it's so great that Kate Robson, who was my support system at Sinai, and she was before me and I was for you and we're all piggybacking on this, um, that she's giving those online talks on your Canadian Premature Baby Foundation um, platform because having that go-to and having those parents you can talk to and peer support is so important, especially in times like these, because this is, number one, this has never been done before. This is all new to all of us. There is no uh, set script for this. There is no precedent. We're all improvising, if you will, right now. My background is in improv. And so I'm like, okay, yes, and what can we do to add on to this to move forward? The other part of this too, is we have to recognize that this is not forever right? We have to put it in perspective because the more you think about this is never going to end, the more overwhelmed you get. And the third thing is the reality of it. What can I change? What can I do to make it better? Um, how can I change the way I look at it? So realizing that that's for us as parents, but also for our children, you know, this is all new to everybody. Um, so having your support system with Kate and also having your online chats and your Facebook page and where people can reach out and connect with each other is so important. You know, if we can't see each other and hug each other, but at least to connect some way and share information. Absolutely. And this week we were actually talking about how is this similar to our NICU experiences? How is that, um, this, that NICU experience prepared us a little bit for this? Uh, obviously, it's it's unprecedented, but there is some similarities that we're chatting about this this week: the isolation, the fear of our children uh, getting sick again. So, tell me your experience with that. How are you uh, exactly? Hand washing. <laughs> and it, you know that that was the first trigger for me. I'm like, oh my gosh! Now the whole world knows about hand sanitizer and hand washing. <laughs> Yay! But at the same time, wow, it's, you know, we isolation, um, germs, vaccinations, hand washing, all these things um, back in the forefront. But there's so many similarities, it, for me anyway, the NICU, you know, like this is a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, what are the things you can do to get yourself through it? Um, making sure you're sleeping well, making sure you're eating well, making sure that you're getting outside and getting fresh air um, so, so that you can, you know, function. There's a lot of similarities. And so there's something lovely about being a preemie parent because we have a little inside track on this, but there's also, it, it brings up a lot, like the fears and, and all of that. So to being able to talk to people who get it, really important. Being able to laugh with friends online, being able to connect, whether it's over a coffee or a glass of something else, and, and really just laugh and release because there's a lot of pressure coming from all sides, right? Absolutely. And I, I still think about the dates and then I see what can I control? or can I not control, right? And there's moments that are things that are happening out there that we can we have absolutely zero control. We can only control how we are dealing with this and control what's happening inside our homes and you know, stay home, make sure we, our kids are protected, we, they are safe, we are safe and we have food at the table. And for me personally, it's like, how can I help others getting through this? 
with a little bit of, you know, my experience as a preemie mom and being isolated for a year after Gabriel came off the ICU. And I think those are things that I keep focusing on. I've been through this. As you said, there, there will be an end. So try right. to focus on those things that, that I can control, which is my mindset right now. Completely. And the days you need to give a good cry, you give a good cry. And that's how you're going to get through the day. <laughs> of course, you know, like this is, this, there's a lot of emotions around this. And there's a lot of trying to, ba- I won't say the word balance, but a lot of calibration needed at different times of the day. Um, even, you know, everybody's feeling on edge or confused or, you know, and the other part about this, about what you, you were talking about, what you can control, um, making sure that you're not inundated with information on social media or that you're reading too much right before bed or listening to the news and also making sure that that you are listening to the correct information because if you're listening to things that aren't credible um, that's one way to go off and you know with with information that is not correct but also being inundated by too much as well so that was for me the same as in the the NICU I could only take small chunks of information at a time I got them from credible sources my healthcare team and I trusted that information. I I tried to block out the white noise of other people's opinions or other people's things, control what you can control, get information from, you know, the scientific community and go one day at a time. Absolutely. It's so important. And talk about the NICU. I'm sure there's some families who are still in the NICU living a very, very stressful time added an extra layer of stress to those families as we know in many hospitals across Canada only one parent is being allowed inside the unit in a period of 24 hours to avoid the spread of COVID in the healthcare community because we need those professions to be working hard in the hospitals to support families and we have to adjust and you have to understand what is happening inside the hospitals as well. But what can we tell those families at this time, Jack? They are inside the units, which is add, added layer of stress, feeling alone because there's no more peer support groups happening in hospitals, no education sessions. They cannot have an extended family with them. What can we tell them? Well, I would say, you know, hygiene, health hygiene, mental wellness hygiene. Are you, make sure you're sleeping, make sure you're eating well, make sure you take breaks and go outside. Listen to the healthcare professionals who are, you know, that, that's how we got through it with when we, when it was under regular circumstances, you know, when to hand wash, what to touch, following the rules because the rules are changing all the time. So being aware that, yeah, everybody's doing their best in there. This is new for everybody. The staff is doing their best and they're there to help. So everybody's under the same sort of um, stress and, and realizing that you can only control what you can control, like you were saying before. So the, the, the health hygiene, keeping sleeping, eating, um, making sure that you're talking to people and getting out your emotions and, you know, just, just having a focus of, I will get through this. You're great with mantras. What would you say, Fabi? You're good with giving yourself a mantra of, getting through it. I always sometimes think, visualize a ticker tape in my brain when I have to get through something. This too shall pass is something my mother used to say to me. I know it's silly little things like that, that just, you know, sort of ground you and grounding your body is another way to do it. You know, whether it's a body scan or breathing exercises are huge. We forget to breathe and all of a sudden you're breathing from up here and you should be down in your belly and doing breathing exercises. There's some on the website for that, but there's so many great apps out there. Uh, there's great mindfulness apps you could listen to. I, I think they're still available or, or allowed to use their iPhones in the unit right now. Is that correct? Yeah. Most hospitals now, it, even the hospitals who could not, um, parents could not use the phones inside the units. They are putting cell phones on a bag. So the bag is clear so they can actually type and do anything they want uh, with the phone inside the bag. Uh, which is great, at least uh, keeping families connected that way. Uh, not the ideal, obviously, certainly not. Uh, we know that. But um, yes, they, we can listen to mindfulness. Actually, the, we have a series of mindfulness uh, podcasts. Which are pod- fantastic, by the way. I highly recommend. So that's a perfect thing. Put in your earphones, have the mindfulness podcast from from the Premature Baby Foundation and just you know, center yourself, 
Right. They are free to download on our website or on iTunes. And I think it is a, it is a great uh, resource for families now. But Jack, let's talk about families who, who are just going home or have just been discharged recently. And we know this is a, another journey ahead. Uh, I always thought that once Gabriel left the ICU, okay, my life was going to go back to uh, a normal that I knew normal to be. And obviously I was faced with something completely different because I was afraid of Gabriel getting sick. So how can parents cope? I guess pretty much the same recommendations to cope at home, but now we have also this extra layer of isolation and stress. Yeah, it, it really brings a, another layer to all of it. The isolation piece is really hard. So connecting is really important with your groups, with the other parents that get it. Um, but there is something lovely that the world sort of gets it now, that everybody's feeling isolated right now. So it, it's not, you're not alone. That's, that's a wonderful feeling too, realizing you think it's just you, but realizing, wait a minute, everybody's feeling this right now. And that's okay. And it's okay not to be okay. And it's okay to ask for help. And it's okay to express your feelings and, and to keep that mindset that this isn't going to be forever. And it is scary coming home from the hospital. I remember being terrified. Um, it was May many years ago with Tess, <laughs> nine years ago, um, and just not wanting to go outside and just terrified of going on the other side of the street from people, which is now what we do <laughs> when I'm taking Tess on a bike ride. Get on the other side of the street, two meters away, come on. Um, so all of these things the world ha sort of has in practice right now and just realizing that you are not alone and it's okay to feel these feelings i was scared to talk about it i was scared to to say that i was scared because i felt so lucky to be home and so like we made it through but but it's okay it's okay to reach out I, and i think it's important to acknowledge our feelings as well right not pretend so. they are not there they don't exist they do exist they are real and I think it's okay to ask for help when we need help and help for us, help for our children. And for our kids too to ask for help. When this first started, test tends to keep things inside. And once we started talking about things and reading the books and seeing the videos on COVID, then the questions started coming. And I could answer them age appropriately and honestly, for, and instead of her keeping it inside. Um, Every child's different. Everybody's going to deal with it differently. But, but knowing your kid and, and being able to talk about it and um, just get it out in the open, sort of taking the air out of the balloon, um, has been helpful for us. And I think it's, it's helpful for parents to talk about it, but it's also helpful for the kids to talk about it. Oh, that's wonderful. And you also have some mindfulness exercise for kids on the, the portal, which is so great. Maybe all parents could give it a try to see if it fits the yeah. family, fits the child. There's a wonderful one called Mind Management in there. Uh, Annabelle Fitzsimmons and her partner in Toronto has this great website. And so she provided some free uh, mindfulness for kids on there. Um, there's some exercises right before this all happened. And there was the um, you know, lockdown, if you will. Uh, Tess was working with a child um, life specialist at our house, and she was doing some wonderful exercises with her. And we've shared those on the site. We've also shared apps on the site, um, you know, how to do breathing, body scans, all that for kids, um, books on it, uh, just getting them in the, the habit of that so that even in times that aren't as stressful and um, world, you know, globally uh, scary, they can still use that, whether it's for school or for sleeping or calming themselves down or worry that it's okay to talk about these kind of things. Books are huge for that. Well, for my child anyway, just reading a book and then starting the dialogue on that. Absolutely. So thank you, Jack, so much for joining us here today. Uh, thank you for putting all this effort in, into creating this resource for families. Uh, this is amazing, and I, we, really, we truly appreciate that. And thank you all for joining us here today. And I'm sorry for the technical difficulties again. Uh, we'll be back live next week. Monday, we're going to take a break, as it's a Monday uh, long weekend. Uh, we are planning to spend some time with family only the immediate family, which means children and husband at this time, <laughs> and perhaps face uh, timing uh, grandparents in Brazil. Uh, 
but please people stay home. This is so important for all of us. But Wednesday, Kate Robson will be back with her, uh, with her group online. And please follow our social media channels for all the links. And next Friday, April the 17th, I will be talking live with Dr. Paige Church. She's a neonatologist and also a developmental pediatrician. And she will be talking about follow-up. That is being such an important topic. A lot of parents have been asking us what is happening with follow-up clinics across Canada and what can we do at home to support our babies after discharge. So tune in uh, and Jack has something to say. Yes, on the, the Fun Academy website, there is a section for preemie parents and in it, there is a, a little video by an OT who was a former preemie herself, who gives some suggestions of little um, fine motor exercises, speaking of follow-up and Paige Church is phenomenal. So you're really gonna wanna st stay tuned for that one. Yeah, thank you so much for that reminder. Yes, and I will post the link for uh, Jack's website on the comments below. And I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. If you celebrated Passover, happy belated Passover. And for all of uh, all, all people who celebrate Easter, happy Easter, or have a wonderful long weekend in your homes. And I will see you next week. Thank you. No germs. No germs. Wash your hands. Please wash your hands.